Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Strawn. I'm a resident at Duke, and today I will be talking about the topic of pyloric stenosis. Our learning objectives today will be to define pyloric stenosis, discuss clinical presentation, outline diagnostic criteria, and also to review management of this condition. So to start, what is pyloric stenosis? Pyloric stenosis is hypertrophy of the pyloric muscle with elongation, thickening, and near-complete obstruction of the gastric outlet. It was first described as early as 1717 in Europe, and by 1887 the pathology was understood. This is the most common cause of metabolic alkalosis in infancy. You can see on the diagram at the right that there is an area where we can see the hypertrophy of the muscle where the pyloric stenosis obstructs the gastric outlet. Importantly is epidemiology for this diagnosis. It occurs in 2 to 3.5 patients per 1,000 live births in the United States. It is five times more common in males than in females and generally presents in children between 3 to 5 weeks of age. 30% of these patients are the first-born children in their families, and familial aggregation is common, with there being a 20-fold higher incidence among siblings. There have been several genetic loci that predispose patients to pyloric stenosis that have been identified. For example, the infant hypertrophic pyloric stenosis 1 gene, or NOS1, encodes for a gene that affects the neuronal nitric oxide synthase that affects relaxation of smooth muscle and may contribute to the progression toward pyloric stenosis. In addition, abnormalities in peptide-containing nerve fibers may also play a role. There are also environmental exposures that can predispose patients to having this condition, one of which is macrolide antibiotics. It's been found that oral erythromycin for post-exposure prophylaxis or for pertussis treatment has been implicated in infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis cases. The clinical presentation is important to remember when evaluating a child for whom this may be a diagnosis. Generally, these patients are three to six week old infants with immediate postprandial non bloody projectile vomiting. 91% of patients who have pyloric stenosis will present specifically with projectile vomiting immediately after feeding. In addition, these patients are hungry after the event as compared to other patients with different diagnoses who may have a loss of appetite. These patients are thin, dehydrated if this condition has gone on for long enough, and they can have a palpable olive in their abdomen. This olive is felt best immediately after emesis as the stomach is more decompressed at that time, and this exam feature is almost always pathognomonic for this condition. Diagnosis can be made in a variety of ways. Labs are often drawn to examine the degree of electrolyte abnormalities in a patient. Electrolyte imbalances are from the loss of large amounts of gastric hydrochloric acid and retention of bicarbonate, leading to a hypochloremic metabolic acidosis. Again, the loss of HCl and KCl is from the vomiting, and there's a decreased release of pancreatic bicarbonate because of the gastric outlet obstruction. This dehydration will lead to a contraction alkalosis as well. These electrolyte abnormalities, however, are now seen less commonly given that the diagnosis is being made earlier in the disease process. In addition, as was mentioned previously, a palpable olive on physical exam is also part of our diagnosis. In addition, ultrasound is almost always diagnostic, and an upper GI contrast study can also be performed. Here we see an example of an ultrasound image showing the thickened pyloric muscle of the pyloric stenosis. Accuracy of the ultrasound is operator dependent, and we generally measure the pyloric muscle thickness, pyloric diameter, and pyloric muscle length. In general, a pyloric muscle thickness of greater than 4 millimeters and a length of greater than 16 millimeters have diagnostic sensitivity and specificity of 89 and 100 percent, respectively. Another study that can be performed is an upper GI of a patient with pyloric stenosis. You can see the apple core or string sign toward the right of this image where you see an elongated pyloric canal given that the muscles are making this canal smaller than they normally would be on an upper gastrointestinal study. 
treatment for this condition is exclusively surgical. Pyloromyotomies have been performed regularly for this condition. Surgery should be delayed, however, until the patient is stable and adequately hydrated with a return to normalcy of their electrolytes. The procedure involves a longitudinal incision of the hypertrophic pylorus and dissection to the level of the submucosa. You can see in this image that this allows the lumen of the pylorus to be opened and no longer compressed by the thickened muscle. Another possible intervention is a balloon dilation, but this is not as effective at disrupting the seromuscular ring, which is causing the obstruction. In summary, pyloric stenosis is caused by hypertrophy of the pyloric muscle. Presenting symptoms include consistent postprandial emesis and subsequent hunger. Treatment consists of electrolyte stabilization and surgical repair.